The year is 1987. The visible hand of Matt Groening just sold some drawings to Tracy Ullman. The invisible hand of the market uncovers that one universal desire of mankind as a whole turns out to be role-playing as an Italian plumber. And Ronald McDonald just had the brilliant idea of combining unhealthy diets with gambling. And the McDonald's monopoly was introduced in McDonald's around the world. Coca-Cola or one million dollars. So play Monopoly, do not pass go, go directly to McDonald's. The idea was simple. Whenever you buy certain items from the headquarters of the Diabetes Industrial Complex, you get a couple of stickers that correspond to properties in Monopoly. Most of these stickers are about as common as jokes about McDonald's ice cream machines and give you prices that are about as valuable as a social validation from somebody commenting on your meme with the word this. However, for each street color and railway, there's one super rare piece that gives you access to prices you would actually want. From cinema vouchers over phones, TVs, vacations, a hug from your dad, motorcycles, cars, or Chesna to over a million dollars in cash. Fun fact, because of sweepstakes laws in the US, you are actually not obliged to buy anything to get those Monopoly stickers. You can simply send a letter to McDonald's and demand some stickers. You're legally required to be just as likely to win as anyone buying the stickers as part of their menu. Because of other laws in the US, companies are generally not allowed to host their own contests because, well, they would obviously cheat. And so McDonald's has to hire another independent company to do those promotions for them. Simon Marketing. And here is where protagonist comes into play. Jerome P. Jacobson was born in Hollywood, Florida. In the 80s, he moved to Atlanta, Georgia to work for a printing house, after which he worked his way up the corporate ladder of Simon Marketing in Lawrenceville, Georgia, where he became the director of security. It was his job to look after the winning game stickers for McDonald's promotional events, such as the McDonald's Monopoly. He was the one that would take the stickers to packaging centers around the country, where he himself would apply them to the Big Mac cartons and so cups that would go to randomized McDonald's locations. Even though he was the head of security, he himself was under constant surveillance from a state auditor because otherwise, well, he would obviously cheat. She basically followed Jacobson wherever he went and made sure that the stickers never left a special case by checking that the tamper-proof seal was always intact, which it always was, until the spring of 1995 when Jacobson received a package from one of Simon Marketing's suppliers, which was full of those tamper-proof seals. Of course, Jacobson would never do that, but now he could technically open the case of winning stickers, take them out, and replace them with regular stickers, and then just reapply the seals afterwards. Turns out that rather than sending them to the company, they had mistakenly sent them to Jacobson himself. However, since he always had the state auditor with him, he had to do it at the only place she wouldn't follow him the toilet of the Atlanta International Airport. And while you or one of your parents had one last wee before going on vacation at Disneyland, in the stall next door, some guys started one of the biggest scandals in fast food history, before Burger King foot lettuce. Number 15, Burger King foot lettuce. The last thing you'd want in your Burger King burger is someone's foot fungus. It is your birthday. Collect $10 from every player. With the stickers acquired, Jacobson obviously couldn't just go to McDonald's and redeem all the prices. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> all of the prices. <laughs> like you me, huh? What are the odds? Don't you work for us? Quick, Jerome. Say something to defuse the situation. Did you just say say something to defuse the situation? Ah! Instead, Jacobson decided that he would approach his friends and family and sell them the winning stickers for a fraction of what they win. He, for example, sold a $200,000 sticker to his butcher for $45,000. He sold some to his local car dealership and some to his nephew. However, to make sure that the eventual winners weren't directly linked to him, he told the people he sold the stickers to to sell them on to at least one other person before cashing in. Jacobson was playing fast food mail fraud 40 chess so much, in fact, that he actually gave a $1 million game piece anonymously to St. Jude's Children's Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee, so that if he ever got caught, he could use this in court to convince the jury that he's not a bad person. He then started selling stickers to the Colombo Mafia family. With the help of the Mafia, he now managed to sell all of the game pieces quickly and reliably and made an absolute fortune over the next couple of years. Everywhere are winning big, playing the Monopoly game at McDonald's. 
Barbara Gray won a sea do jet boat. Mary Wallingsford won a $2,000 Citibank shopping spree. Kyle McKinnon won a Sega Saturn with a Daytona USA game. Jerry Colombo. This is Gennaro Colombo. The mafia guy that Jacobson sold the tickets to. And that is the Dodge Viper he won in 1995. Five years later, in March of 2000, the FBI received a tip about a guy called William Fisher, who years earlier won a million dollars in McDonald's game. Fisher turned out to be Columbus' father-in-law. Two winners in one family, you say? That is either an extreme amount of luck in the family or an extreme amount of cholesterol in the bloodstream. When the FBI investigated further, they found out that both lived in Jacksonville, Florida, where there was another family that claimed three separate $1 million prices and a Dodge Viper. How bold do you have to be? You already went there to claim a car, and then you go there to claim a million dollars. Okay, okay. That's already, that's crazy. You go there again to claim another million dollars. Then to have the audacity to go there a third time and go, I know this is crazy, but hear me out. Incredible. In 2001, when the next McDonald's monopoly started, the FBI was ready. They pretended to be a film production company that interviewed all the winners and started to wiretap the ones that acted suspiciously. Like, for example, the ones that, you know, couldn't remember in which restaurant they won the sticker. Funnily enough, the van they rode around in rocked a logo and tagline reading Shamra Productions. Cause you're just lucky. As head of security for Simon Marketing, Jacobson was obviously one of the prime suspects. And after validating the winners of that year and the years before that, there was a clear cluster around Georgia, where Jacobson lived, and Florida, where he had previously worked as a police officer. Three of the winners lived within two miles of Jacobson's residence. In August of 2001, Jacobson was charged with felony conspiracy to commit mail fraud, and 52 other people that were indirectly involved were also indicted. 48 of those 52 pled guilty and took plea agreements before the trial even began, while two people changed their plea from not guilty to guilty during their trial. Imagine seeing 48 other people taking plea deals because of the overwhelming evidence against you, and you're like, <laughs> I'm a fight this justice system. <sighs> Damn, this is just in your hands. Jacobson justified his long-running multi-million dollar crime as being his reaction to McDonald's executives manipulating the game to ensure high-level prices went to areas in the United States rather than Canada. And so he took everything for himself and his friends in Florida. True restorative justice. The judge was so impressed by Jacobson's valorous efforts to stand up for the rights of the average Canadian consumer that he awarded him with an ambassadorship to Canada and freed Tim Hortons for the rest of his life. Except he didn't, and instead he obviously had to pay back all the money received a guilty verdict on several counts of mail fraud and three years in a Florida prison. Then in 2006, he rolled doubles on his third try and got out of jail. Thank you to all my loyal patrons, special thanks to all the new patrons, nobody, Sauerkraut again, Richard, Starclimber, Alex Aristale, Alan, Emilio, the Weselaktionärsversammlung, Kishan and Jesse. And if you want your name to be next on the list in all of my videos until the heat death of the universe, do what these lovely, lovely, lovely people did and become one of my first 100 patrons. Anyways, thank you all for watching, have a lovely day. He then started selling sickers, then started selling sickers, he then started selling, he then started selling, he then started selling, started selling stickers, started selling, started selling stickers, started selling stickers, started stickers, selling. He then started selling.